Hey guys, the age of 27, I'll promote a director at a large financial services institution, literally within five years from graduating from university. I remember actually writing a blog article about it and it literally went viral. But yeah, in this video, I'm gonna be telling some insights in terms of how I've navigated my career, still whilst managing various side hustles. Uh, um, but yeah, how I managed to get a fast track promotion and maybe you can learn something from it. Maybe it will help you in any way. So yeah, do subscribe, do comment, do like, do share. And yeah, let's get straight into it. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Lorraine Wright, also known as the Chief Side Hustler. And I'm just thankful to have you guys all come back again. Literally, I've been overwhelmed with the support you guys have given me, so I appreciate it. I'm very much out of my comfort zone, but the fact that you guys have continued to come back, I really, really do appreciate it. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing some insights in terms of how I navigate my career, how I got promoted at such a young age. And yeah, so where does it all start? Most people, when I tell them that I work for UBS, which is a global financial services institution, um, a wealth manager and investment bank, they're always surprised to learn that I never studied anything remotely related to finance or banking. All my life I studied information technology. It's always been IT from GCSE, IT at A level, information systems when I got to university. When I went to college, I went to Richmond upon Thames College, um, I studied IT there, got straight A's. Um, that could have opened the door for me to go to a lot of different universities, Red Brick Universities, Russell League Universities, but I was never really informed or never really had the network that could inform me that I can go to quote unquote top universities. I'm being very, very strategic with the words that I use here. But what Richmond upon Thames taught me to do because I was surrounded by a lot of friends I have today and I've, I've known a lot of the people that you know were with me at college and what they're doing now, they're all hustlers. They're all straight up hustlers, which I absolutely love. They are all so driven by the world of business and being successful and I'm so thankful to be surrounded by these people. Even though I don't see them all the time, the sheer fact that I know what they're doing, the sheer fact that they're on my peripheral um, is you know inspiring me. So when I was at college, um, studied IT, but got that whole sense of hustling from college. Now, as I said, I could have gone to, if I, if, if I was informed, and I never was informed at that time, if I could apply for universities like Oxford or Cambridge or whatever it was, because I had three A's. And those times, I don't know, A-levels have A-stars now, right? I can't even remember, but at that time, three A's was the top. Um, what I did have the information about, or what I was advised to do, was very much to find a course that enabled me to do a placement year, a sandwich course. And that for me was one of the best advice I can have ever had at that age. I very much understood the importance of working. I come from a working class background. My mum has always instilled in us working. I remember at the age of 16, she dragged me down Clapham High Street, or was it Clapham Junction High Street, with my CV in my hand, and literally took me from shop to shop to shop to shop to find a job. And we got to um, mother care. I don't know, mother care is closed down now, I think. So my mum said, you know, are you looking for anyone? And um, they said, yeah, I'm looking for some sales advisors. So yeah, I handed in my CV. Next week, I got a call for an interview, came in, interviewed me, and I thankfully got the job. So ever since the age of 16, I've always been working, which has instilled in me this drive to work and this drive for uh, being successful. Um, and I do believe that thanks to working at such a young age, I always understood the power of getting an experience somewhere. So when I got to college and I was told about the fact that, you know, there are some courses that offer you the chance to take a year out and do a sandwich course, I wasn't primarily focused on looking for courses and universities that offered me this chance. At the time, everyone was so big on, you know, taking a gap year and going traveling. And because of my experience of working, getting money and getting experience, I just wanted to maximize the year that I would have and work and get experience. So when I got to college, when I, when I was looking for my, the various universities to go to, I did a short list based on sandwich courses, but sandwich courses for information technology related courses. I also wanted to be not too far from home, but the opportunity to live on campus. And I came across Brunel University, which is where I ended up going. And I went there with a number of people that also went to my college. 
and quite frankly probably one of the best decisions I've made as well to go to Brunel University again surrounded by hustlers and I'm loving the people that I went to university with especially people in my year group especially people that were above me and, and below me in the year group wise everyone is just on point I just absolutely love the fire that came with people that went to Brunel University you know a lot of people come from diverse backgrounds and similar backgrounds to myself which brings a whole different dynamic to your experience at university but anyway I digress when I was at university, I studied information systems. And as I said, I got the opportunity to do a sandwich placement. And that sandwich placement was a year long and you had the chance to go and apply for jobs, you know, that would do or take interns. And I remember at the time, um, I had just passed my driving test when I started university and I was so big on trying to find a company that offered a company car. Don't ask me why. I mean, a lot of people was kind of looking at banking and finance. I have a friend of mine, Arnold, who went to Morgan Stanley. And at the time, you know, he was getting crazy amounts of money. And my mind wasn't focused on money for some reason. It was focused on getting experience, but also having a company car. Do not ask me why. I could have applied to go to places like management consultancy companies and things like that. But my mind was so fixated on this whole company car thing. And lo and behold, I came across Volkswagen and Volkswagen happened to do a placement scheme and did it primarily for people who are in IT. And so I was able to get an IT placement at Volkswagen and get a company car. So, however, at the time, the salary was about I'm not sure if I'm even allowed to say, but the salary was roughly £15,000 for the year. But I was happy. I was getting half what most other of my counterparts and, and, and students at the time were getting. Uh, or, okay, they would say half. It could be half. I don't know. I'm just speculating. But it wasn't very much at the time. I had a company car, so I was happy. And I was doing a placement that I loved. You know, I was doing something in an industry that I absolutely loved, in an area that I wanted to get into. So the placement year was about IT, but in the context of project management. So I was a PMO. For those people that are in the project management world, you know that PMO stands for Project Management Officer. I was in a team that managed all of the IT systems for Volkswagen, Audi, and their various subsidiaries. So this was a head office based in Milton Keynes. So I moved out to Milton Keynes for a year. I got a nice, amazing house from others. Kush, Kapil, Natalie and Yin, we all lived together. It was absolutely an amazing experience in that house, Neath Hill in Milton Keynes. And uh, we were working for Volkswagen head office, you know, which was incredible. And the benefit of that is that, you know, Volkswagen owns Audi, Skoda, Seat and some other brands as well. And so we got to choose cars from any one of those brands and you can change your car every so often. And so I, I was so gassed because I was like, I wanted an A3. I always wanted an A3 at the time. And there was me, I think the first day when you fill out the boarding form, you always, you also fill out what car you wanted. So I just happily put down my A3. The following week, the A3 gets delivered. I think you get a fuel card, you get it topped up and everything like that. So I was just overwhelmed, so happy. Yeah. The year basically for me was essentially working in the project management office for Volkswagen head office. Supporting a lot of the project managers. But that year taught me some amazing things and that really gave me the head start. I had some amazing mentors. I had Ray, who was my boss, Leslie, who I worked with, Lindsay, who was an amazing, amazing, amazing person and still is to this day because I see her always um, commenting on some of the things that I do. So these people have really been pivotal in my journey because they corrected me, they gave me the language to speak in a corporate environment. I knew, it, even how to answer a phone, you know, I didn't know how to do that in the corporate world. So for me, it was really an opportunity to learn how, once you embed yourself in the corporate environment, I mean, I was what, 1920 at the time gave me the chance to just learn and understand what it takes to work in that environment. And I was given some projects to manage as well and bearing in mind that you know I was only two years into my degree it also gave me the chance to leverage some of the context and the, and the things I had picked up in my degree and apply them to my day-to-day -day work at Volkswagen. So I was at Volkswagen for about a year all in all and that year ran from June to the following June. Now, when June had come, I thought to myself, look, I'm not due back at university till October that year. So I thought to myself, how am I going to maximize the time that I had? And so what I did, I thought, let me try and find a summer internship. And I was, again, looking for ways and means to further my experience in the whole project management and IT space. What I managed to do was I found, um, I looked in the top 10 or the top 100 
the list of top 100 graduate recruiters that is put out by Times Higher Education, I think it is. And one of the ones that really stood out for me was Accenture. Accenture, even just by reading about it and even by looking at the kind of things they did, really not looked like the kind of culture that I wanted to be I part of. looked in terms of the application process, looked at the fact that you had to kind of submit an application form, go through, for an assessment, etc. For the, for, the, for the summer internship. And the summer internship lasted for eight weeks, where they'll put you up in accommodation in London um, and you'll get hands-on experience working in the whole management consultancy space, which were very much, I felt, like a natural progression to the kind of experience I had gained from, from Volkswagen. So... At that time, I already had picked up on the fact that it was important to leverage your network to let to open doors. So what I did actually is I checked out my LinkedIn and I checked out how many people had worked at Accenture from Brunel and I and had gone to Brunel University, the university that I went to. I came across Peter Ward who was the founder of Where Are You Now, which is almost like a predecessor of Facebook. Gosh, that sounds like I'm old. Or let's just say it's a competitor, an early competitor of Facebook. I think they got bought by lastminute.com. So he was one of the founders. Um, I learned that he went to Accenture. So I reached out to him. I said, do you mind having a conversation with me in terms of how you got into Accenture, how it was, etc." And he was very, very open to doing that. So we call, I had a call with him. He gave me some of the insights and all of those insights helped me to get into Accenture. I, I went to the assessment center. It was very, very easy to get in at the time because I had that knowledge that Peter had thankfully given me. So started my eight week internship with Accenture. Accenture's a wonderful company to work for, by the way. I tell anyone, you're starting your career, Go to a management consultancy company because they are incredible. You learn about even things like the word deck. I did not know what a deck was until I went to manage when until I went into management consultancy. Deck is basically a PowerPoint presentation, which we now see as like a pitch deck when we're pitching to people. But that word deck, I had no idea. Who knows? Who knew what a deck was? But anyway, all those things, even like. The kind of words, that you, the kind of things like start off a 10, low hanging fruits, all of that stuff is just basically consultancy. Speak. Yeah, I learned all of that stuff from Accenture. So did my eight week summer internship and lo and behold, thanks to God, they offered me a graduate role after graduating, which for me was amazing because it meant that I didn't have to worry about applying for jobs after graduation. So fast forward, did my degree, went back to university after my sandwich year, did my, my final year project based on some of my experience I learned from Volkswagen, completed my degree, got a first class to the grace of God and was able, you know, looking eagerly looking forward to start Accenture. Then I remember receiving the phone call where Accenture has said, unfortunately, because at the time it posed a financial crisis, they were not really taking people on. I mean, they stopped, they stopped allowing people to start. So they kind of, it's kind of like, today's version of furlough. So what they did is they put us on hold, but they still paid us. So I was like, yeah, okay, but I didn't want to stay at home. So I decided to start looking for jobs during that time frame that we were on hold. So remember, I had a job, but they said I couldn't start. Um, so I started applying for jobs. And again, remember, I also had given back my Volkswagen car at the time. Um, I had an Audi, I went through driving 8.3s, Tiguan's. I, we drove the R8 at one time, you know, I had all these cars that I had been driving and I still wanted to have drive. I didn't want to go and buy a car yet. I was looking for companies that also offered company cars. I remember applying, at the time I applied to an estate agent because I know what, estate agents give company cards. And I worked for them for a bit, but I realized that I was no good at the time at sales. And remember, I am now the head of sales for an agritech startup. Um, but at the time I hated sales and I hated lying to people and estate agents lie to people. So I had a company car, but was going around and, you know, lying to people. I did not like that. So I quit and I applied to Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Why? Because they offered cars. I didn't get in. I didn't get the job. And then I applied for another company um, based in Croydon, in the IT project management space. And I actually enjoyed that job. I worked as a project manager for them uh, for some time and, you know, managed also to get my Prince 2 qualification. And those guys were absolutely wonderful. They gave me a lot of the, the principles that I have today as well. So that was a great, great start. And I thought to myself, after working with them, I really wanted to work abroad. So what I decided to do is I actually applied and looked for ways and means to work outside of the country. At the time, I felt like America was a land of hopes and dreams and opportunities. Not quite sure if that's still the case, but yeah, no way, I'm joking, I'm joking. But I, I thought to myself, let me apply for a job in America. So I managed to find these visas that 
where you can kind of latch on to, you can call it like an internship visa, I think it was. I think it was like a V5 visa, I can't remember what it was. I applied for one of those, I got it, and I applied for a job. I managed to get a job in Chicago working for a food distribution company as a project manager, again, in the IT space, managing their IT systems. And I love that. So I was in Chicago for almost a year. Amazing opportunity, amazing time, met a lot of friends, enjoyed going to watch the NBA basketball games, things like that. So that was an amazing opportunity for me, an amazing experience, always traveling. I had friends that were working in uh, New York on the Mount Batten program. So I was always kind of heading over the weekends and flying out to New York. So yeah, that was great. But anyway, I came back to UK afterwards and started back with Accenture because Accenture had now allowed us to start working. So I worked for Accenture for some time. Accenture puts you with clients and as a management consultancy company, you basically are doing two different jobs. And they put you with a client and the client, um, you're basically doing, you know, acting as a consultant for them. So you start with Accenture as an analyst. So I started as an analyst and I, I already had a lot of the experience working with them previously through my summer internship. So I was very much on fire, always trying to do stuff outside of my client job to also show myself. Management consultancies are very big on social activities when you're not with your client as well. So always, I was always one of the people that were organizing social activities. I was part of the African Caribbean Society at the time as well. When I was at university, I didn't mention all this by the way, but when I was at university, I was, a lot, I was really heavily involved in a lot of clubs and societies. I was part of the African Caribbean Society, I was a student mentor, I was part of the Entrepreneurship Society. When I was at uni, I was a hustler. You know, when people were in the library, I had gone to Costco to buy sweets and snacks and was selling them outside the library. I remember selling phone cases at universities. Like literally, I was hustling all the way through university, but I still got my first class. But anyway, I digress. I was just giving you that context so you understand that for me, I was I always feel like I have to be busy. And busy is not necessarily a good thing. Busy if you're productive is a good thing. I want to be clear on that. So those people that always tell you they're busy, make sure they're actually doing stuff. But anyway, I've digressed completely. Um, but forgive me, I know I'm jumping about, about a, little, a little bit. But when I was Accenture, for me, I always felt like I had to do something. And I was very big on just fast tracking my career. So I was looking at what do you need to do to make sure you're seen? And for promotions, when you're at somewhere like Accenture or UBS, where I now work, you have to be seen. You know? So what are you doing to be seen? I, mean, I was always trying to find ways and means to help my senior managers organizing things, you know, being part of societies, mentoring people, and also asking questions. Just be seen, you know? So I was part of, I did a couple of clients, work on the, a few different clients, and I remember, oh, I wanna tell you this story. It's got no relevance whatsoever at all, but it's got relevance to my previous video. I remember the first day of Accenture when we started, and I don't know if this is a good thing, but I'm just highlighting it and just take what you want from it. When you first have Accenture, everyone is in the room and we all had to do kind of like get to know me stuff. And I remember I was on a table with different people and they were, you, they were ask you who your celebrity look looking like. So someone has to tell you who your celebrity looking like was. So there's me, one of the only black girl, I think I was one of two, no, I was in fact the only black girl in that cohort of about 40 people. No, there's more than, I think it was 50, someone correct me, I can't remember, maybe 50 or more people, and they do different cohorts. It can actually be 100, I can't actually remember, to be honest. But I was literally one of the only ethnic minorities, and probably the only black female that I can remember, if I'm not mistaken. Now, I was told I looked like Whoopi Goldberg. Yes. A positive thing in a way because I was inspired by her for my, and you'll see that from my previous video. But not a good thing in the sense that I have no resemblance to Whoopi Goldberg whatsoever. But anyway, I will let you guys take what you want from that. So, Accenture, yes, so I worked for them. I was then given the chance to work for a financial services company, which was and it's UBS. So, um, and as Accenture does, they put you on clients. I was aligned to the financial services area, so in the IT space, 
And the whole idea is that they employ you to work with a client, you work with them, you support them with their projects as a consultant. And so I was given UBS as a client. And that is basically how everything started for me. You know, people think, did I apply for UBS directly? No, I was actually poached. So I was working for a project with UBS with my manager, who, it, who at the time was called Mark. Absolutely love him. I still talk to him to this day. In fact, he messaged me on LinkedIn just the other day. He is the person that basically poached me from Accenture. So I was working for him um, and you know, it was a very small team. So he, and again, the kind of things I was doing, I always wanted to please people. I want to be seen. Anything that he wanted, I would do. I would say late. I would you know, do the whole hours. I'll come in before him. I'll leave after him. You know, I just had to be seen. Still the kind of things that I was doing and asked me very privately you know, do you want to, you know, work for us? And he dangled a very nice carrot at the time to me, doubled my salary, I think it was. And I was able to come in to Accenture at a, a sorry, I was able to come into UBS at a, um, a higher level. Now at the time, I was also going to a promotion at Accenture. Bear in mind that I thought because I was hustling, I was always doing stuff, I managed to get a fast track promotion to consultant within one year working for Accenture. After doing that, um, you know, working for UBS for some you know, time. Mark had asked me, do I want to work for him at UBS? And you know what? It wasn't a difficult discussion or decision for me. I decided to take it. So I started working for UBS. Um, I left Accenture. I started working for UBS. I came in as an associate director at UBS. Right. I was very young at the time. And so I started working on some IT projects, projects ranging from security related projects to IT security, by the way, to things relating to the wealth management and investment bank, you know, moving around from different teams to different teams. Um, bearing in mind, I want to be put this into context as well. You know, the time when I was working, I was at a building in Apple Street around Liverpool Street. Again, on the floor of about 200 people. I was one of the only black people on that floor. And again, I'm giving you these contexts just so you understand the kind of environments that I've been in. I was always also mainly working for male managers as well. I remember, I all remember all of my managers' names. I wouldn't name them, but they were all wonderful and they all gave me, all treated me. In fact, I believe UBS is an amazing company to work for. I'm not here to promote them. I don't even know they know I'm doing this video, but an amazing company to work for. When it comes from, to diversity, when I started to where they are today, I've seen leaps and bounds of improvement, but I never one time by any of my managers felt that I was less than them or unequal to them. Um, I just want to put that out there. But I was always, always given very, very honest so feedback. working for, for, for those people, I learned how to do things, convey messages very simply in PowerPoints. Is, is, those are fundamental information. So I know now when I tell a story or I'm pitching or presenting something, I want to be able to convey that story in no more than three slides. If someone does not get what I'm trying to say in three slides, you're not going to get them. You know, so that's so things like that in UBS have really helped and trained me. Whilst I was working for one of the managers at UBS, I was asked to come out and work in Switzerland. And now the time, the project that I was working on was very much Swiss focused, Swiss heavy. A lot of the team members were based in Switzerland. And for me, I was very shy of the fact I did not want to go. I actually was funding, you know, at the time, you know, very kind of still very early out of university and kind of wanted to just enjoy my time in London. And one of the things that came to my mind is where am I going to get my hair done? Switzerland, where am I going to get my hair done? That was literally one of the things that came to my mind. How am I going to get my hair done? Like being out Chicago, like I just wanted to just be home. But the manager thankfully kept asking me and I was like, hmm, maybe I should go. And he said, you know, just come out for two months, we'll get you a business visa. And I went out for two months. That two months turned into almost four years. But that two months or that four years was really what made me or what got me promoted to director. It was fundamentally the fact that I was out of my comfort zone in a place where I didn't understand the language. I mean, they speak German, Swiss German. I was without anyone that I knew. Their culture is very, very different. Getting out of your comfort zone forces you to adapt and brings the best out of you, I really believe. So working in Switzerland, what I was able to do was again, I was a hustler, but a hustler in a different way. You have to be able to network. Switzerland is a culture of aperos, which is, you know, after work drinks and connecting with people, you know, going to the, the Alps and skiing with your colleagues. I basically played that game. I don't want to say that, but I basically did all of that. I was very close to my managers, trying to adapt myself to the environment. When managers told me to take on board new projects, I did them. I was learning the ways and means to, to become someone and a become a face and a familiar face 
One of my experiences, however, I would say, was it was quite difficult being a black person in, in Switzerland. I remember there was a time when I changed my hair. I flew back very often to the London over the weekends, got my hair done and came back. And there was a time, do you remember when ombre weave was a thing? So you'll start with black and you'll ombre to like blonde. I remember doing that, I came back, I thought, oh, I'm queer first. Oh, I, like. I came back and then one of my managers said to me, oh, that's crazy hair. And I was like, hmm? Do you know how that put me so down? It got me so, so, so down. But anyway, I just got through those things, you know, got through it. A friend of mine as well had lived and worked in Zurich and Esther. And the fact that she had worked there and she had stayed there for like, you know, two, three years, gave me the confidence that she can do it, I can do it. I just kept fighting through. There was these small, small things that kept coming up. And again, when you go on the tram, you're one of the very few black people. You know, the fact that you don't understand the language, you have no idea if they're talking about you or not. So what I decided to do is to learn German. So I got the company to sponsor me, a German lessons, so I did that. I learned about the power of meeting new people and putting myself out there. So one of the main important things for me was, that I learned was to just be close to decision makers. What you find is that when a company is doing promotion rounds, they always ladder people. And by laddering, they're kind of taking people, you, you, you kind of, the decision makers get into the room and they're kind of almost fighting for you. And I learned very early on that they're only going to fight for people that they see. So I really had to be visible. Only you have to be patient, but in that time of patience, and I hope this makes sense, you also have to be visible. And I wasn't, you know, fighting for promotion at the time, but I was learning what are the ways and means to do it. So I had to be very strategic. So decision makers, who are the people that are going to fight for you when it comes to promotion? Who are the people going to write you letters of recommendations? Like the things that we do at UBS is we write 360s. So you need to strategically think about who are the people that you're maybe supervising, who are the people that are maybe above you that can write good letters of recommendation for you. But anyway, the reason why I got promoted was primarily because I was given, I remember very clearly that I was asked to take on a program and this program was a 50 million Swiss franc program. I was gonna, I can't, look, I even have sick my throat. I was asked to manage a 50 million Swiss franc project, program. And this program would involve various project managers who are leaders in their own right, who are also executive directors and, you know, these are levels above me. And it meant that I was gonna be managing those people and delivering something that was a global initiative and a global program. And I remember, being asked to take on the program. Initially, I said no. And I realized very quickly that if I didn't do that, I would not get promoted. And I said no because I felt like little me, me, why can I, you know, do I have the confidence to be able to do that? How can I manage people that are above me? Do I even know what I'm doing? And you know, I always have imposter syndrome. I'm like, why me? How can I do it? But I realized that not only did I have grace upon my life, but he asked me for a reason. And by taking on that project is literally what made me visible. And by that project giving me that visibility, I was able to be seen by multiple different stakeholders. And at the time I kept using my age as an excuse. I was very young. I kept using the fact that I was young. I kept using the fact that in my mind, and I kept using the fact that I was female. I kept using the fact that I was black as an excuse because None of the people that I was managing looked like me. None of the people, everyone that I was managing was older than me. I was managing men, hardly any were female, and no one was black. So I already had my insecurities internally. So I did not want to take up this opportunity or this job. But I remember something just told me, just do it. And already I was out of my comfort zone because I was living in Switzerland, in Zurich. But when I was given this role and told to think about it, I thought about it and then something just said, yeah, take it. And I almost feel like it was God just kind of saying, yeah, take it and, you know, I'm going to guide you through. So yeah, I took the opportunity, I took that prayer. Yeah, I, thankfully, I got the promotion um, because I was visible, I was seen. And yeah, I am, that for me was how I managed to get my fast track promotion. Um, when I was in Zurich, it was an amazing opportunity. I was put up in accommodation. I had new friends. I met my best friend um, out in Switzerland, who I'm now the godmother to her child. So yeah, my the message of this is really to just be able to, you know, when you're out of your comfort zone, you know, opportunities come your way. Use the fact that, you know, my own insecurities, they could have held me back, 
but they actually were beautiful in the fact that they gave me a different perspective and the way that I was able to handle and manage different things. So for anyone that's looking to navigate their career, the biggest things for me is experience, taking yourself out of your comfort zone, um, not letting your insecurity get in the way of some opportunities. Also, create yourself opportunities. And I was very much learn I learned very much at an early age if there is not a seat for you at the table bring your own seat I know that sounds very cliche but I learned the fact that I was very much in the minority at the time of female black young I was able to come to the table and they were listening to me because of the fact that I had prior experience I was able to you know speak on on the level understand and adapt myself to the environment that I was in and that is from experience so it's important to gain experience it's important to be adaptable to the environment so you get into and you know don't be afraid when opportunities come but also create opportunities and I was a big fan of you know if I see something I didn't like look at ways and means to change it or create something so for me, it's very important to create opportunities. UBS was amazing. Um, I've traveled to Singapore, Philippines, Switzerland. You know, it's been amazing, amazing, amazing. And at the time when I was promoted, I was one of the youngest directors at the time. I was 27 at the time. And I am still working for UBS. Um, this year is my ninth year working for UBS. It's been an amazing, amazing experience. UBS is a great company to work for. Again, I'm not here to promote them, but people ask me why I've not moved around. You know, when I find a great company to work for, you stick around. And through UBS, I managed to get a sponsorship to do an executive MBA at the University of Oxford. And I will do another video on that. I now do a four day week and people ask me how I'm able to manage all of the side hustles that I do. I have managed to now negotiate to actually do a four day week, you know, which is going to slowly, slowly become the norm. But the fact that I've managed to do that very early on has helped me. That is one of the reasons why I'm able to do so many different things. because I'm able to use that extra day and plus, you know, the times before and after work to actually do the stuff that I love. And I'm working in IT space. I'm doing stuff that I love. I am currently overseeing a lot of the digital programs relating to some of the social impact work that UBS does and some of the e-commerce activities that we do. That's as of today. But it's giving me the chance, UBS, you get to work in different projects. with different. So you always feel like you're changing jobs every two, three years anyway. So it's been a very incredible experience. Um, and that's basically how I've navigated my career. So I hope that's given you some insights in terms of how my journey has been so far. Um, I've tried to keep this as short as possible, but I know I've been a bit long. And hopefully you've managed to take some something from it. You know, even though it hasn't been very much a... Um, here's tip one, here's two, tip three, but just the fact that, you know, how I managed to do mine, maybe there's something that you can gain from it. Um, but again, next video is I'm gonna be sharing some more insights in terms of my career, um, but also very much deep dive into some of my, deep dive, that's such a management consultancy work, but kind of like deep diving in terms of the various things that I've learned, but also some of my side hustles. So yeah, do continue to support me. Um, I hope you have subscribed, I hope you have liked this video as well. Please do comment, let me know if there's anything else you'd like to hear about, any questions you have as well. And yeah, do look out for the next video. So once again, I'm Lorraine Wright, AKA The Chief Side Hustler, and see you on the next video.